Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk heavyweight boxing. Let's come in here from left field with just a set of outcomes that, quite frankly, are more realistic than anyone is thinking at the present time. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, I'm going to sound crazy here. Let the chips fall where they may. Right? Understand, it's my belief that styles make fights. That errors will define themselves in a certain way and convince you that that's the only way things can go. But there's a lot more fragility than that, right? Different eras have had different fight styles. When a guy emerges on the scene with a different fight style, sometimes everyone is so committed to the current status quo that they have no idea how to deal with him. Now, there is a huge fight it's under publicized. It's Lawrence Okoli's comeback fight. He's going to Poland. And the storyline is he's going to fight the Bridgerweight champion, Lucas Rosansky, who beat Alan Babich, the Savage. Right? And of course, the feeling is that Okoli's going to fight a local guy. Right, that if Acoli's on his game and he's going with former trainer of the year, Joe Gallagher, to Poland, if he's on his game, he should be too much for Rosansky. Now, I'm not going to say how to bet that fight because I've made a video for paid subscribers on exactly that topic. But let me just say this, and I want people to think about it. You remember the mid-80s. You remember the status quo at the time. You did have some shorter fighters who were, you know, cute. Tony Tubbs comes to mind, right? You know, pretty boys who could box you and stuff like that. But most of the guys were big, right? The Larry Holmes era featured people like Larry Holmes, Jerry Cooney, right? Tony Tucker. These were big guys. And they all fought the same kind of way, right? You know, big punches. Everyone could move except for Jerry Cooney, right? But people were, you know, boxers. This was the underhang of the Ali era, where Ali, of course, was a stick and mover, knew how to throw down a back foot, right? Then along came a guy who wasn't even throwing jabs, Mike Tyson. And you might recall Tyson just mowing through guys. Right? Guys could, you know, when you saw Tyson at first, his aggression really seemed startling. While guys like Larry Holmes were on their back foot, taking a while for the thing to develop, Tyson would just walk into the pocket. Tyson would just start throwing big punches right now what I want people to do is to contemplate the idea that right now you have a status quo that's a certain way right think about the heights here Fury Wilder Joshua Anderson Ergovic Zhang Right, think about the fact that, like Michael Spinks showed us in the mid-80s, when he beats Holmes, then he beats Cooney. Right, Michael Spinks jumps up from 175, goes to the heavyweight division, and was just too fast and too fluid for Jerry Cooney, for example. Cooney, look at that fight, folks. Cooney looks like he has... No defense. This is a guy who destroyed Ken Norton in one round. 
Jerry Cooney looks like he has no defense. Cooney did much better against Larry Holmes than he did against Michael Spinks. Well, right now, you have a Michael Spinks type character in the heavyweight division. Right? He's bigger than Spinks. He just beat two of the biggest punchers in the division. Deontay Wilder and Gilles Jean. And that's Joseph Parker. And in both of those fights, didn't it look like Parker was on roller skates? The other guys look so wooden in terms of their movement that Parker seemed to be able to just scoot around on demand in the ring. Right? He was able to outmaneuver the guys. In the Zhang fight, he even gets knocked down twice. He's able to get off the canvas and then move away from Zhang. Well, what I want people to do is to consider the idea, and I know it's far-fetched, right? I know it's far-fetched, but it's moments like this where you're going to get ridiculous odds. Let me also point out, too, that I don't even know if the theory is correct here. I'm going to learn a lot from the okoli Rosansky fight. But what I want people to do is to consider the idea that Mike Tyson is upon us. Mike Tyson is actually here now. And he's been hiding in the Bridgerweight division. Folks, Rosansky is 6'1". He's not that small. He's bigger than Prime Mike Tyson. He's 6'1". But he's tiny compared to Fury, Wilder, Joshua, Anderson, Ergovic, Zhang. Right, folks? He has a better than 90% KO ratio. Right? Better than 90% KO ratio. He's gone through some guys in ways that have been startling. In my favorites folder right now, I have something like three or four of his fights. The Arthur Spielka fight is the most interesting. He comes out, he can't hide his body as well as prime Mike Tyson. Right? Tyson also had better defense. Tyson knows how to put his hands up by his cheekbones and to move more than this guy. But what this guy has, and it's understated right he has great legs he can move around the ring and visually it doesn't look that way he looks like he has a receding hairline he's older he's 38 years old but understand with that experience comes some savvy so this is the guy who knows how to confuse you he throws short hooks. He has full leverage on them. He's one of the harder punchers, believe it or not. Above 200 pounds. Right, so what I want folks to do, depending on what happens in the Okoli fight, if Okoli comes out and destroys him, drops him like Arthur Spielka does, but then is able to finish him. If a Coley flashing one of boxing's best jabs, but understand, a Coley is immobile compared to this guy. If a Coley's able to control distance with that jab, then I'll concede. This guy would have problems. My theory here would be off. But, if this guy is able to slip Okoli's jab, if this guy is able to get inside and land punches with both hands, and understand, folks, he can get low. Right? This is the guy, he stands a little bit more upright than Tyson. He doesn't come out in a crouch, but then you notice there are times where he can get underneath an opponent. Okoli's going to have a four-inch height advantage against this guy. And this guy is excellent to the body. Right, folks? I need for 
the boxing public here to contemplate the idea that this Bridger weight, if he gets by a Coley, could conceivably mow down three or four of the top heavyweights in his late 30s. Right, folks? You know, Martin Bacoli is a long-range hooker. You wonder, okay, Bacoli beat Tony Oka, Olympic gold medalist. Right? You wonder, how could someone get inside on Martin Bacoli, another tall guy, right? How could someone get inside on Martin Bacoli and make Bacoli pay for the loop on his punches? Folks, this guy would be able to. Right? This guy has the legs. This guy can fight low enough. I need for people to think about Canelo. Understand, the secret to Canelo, well, one of them, is that when he fought many of the guys at 168, Canelo didn't even have to take a step backwards. Right? He can come forward and he can hide his head. Right? There are moments in the Danny Jacobs fight where Canelo's on his front foot, not his back foot. He is on his back foot for part of the fight, but he's on his front foot. Jacobs is throwing punches and Canelo is dodging the punches, is coming in low and is able to walk down Danny Jacobs. Now what I'm saying with this guy is that he can come in low, duck under shots. When a guy comes in low, you have to ask the question of whether an opponent has the type of low power. In other words, power shots that they can throw at a guy who's crouching to hurt the guy. If I don't have punches I can throw that are low, that are hard enough to hurt you, I'm going to have problems. Right? The other problem, too, is this guy can, we'll use a phrase here, drive fast. In other words, if the match becomes a shootout, this is the guy who keeps the level head. Right? Understand, too, there are many fighters in history who were dominant heavyweight champions who would be in our Bridger weight today. Right? Rocky Marciano, Jack Dempsey, Tyson himself, early in his career, Joe Fraser. Right? Look at the weights of Ali and Fraser. For their first fight. Now I believe Bridger Waits knew. But I believe we're asleep at the wheel as a boxing community. In other words, we're thinking of Bridger Weight like we think of Cruiser Weight. Even though Bridger Weight goes up to 224 pounds. Right? We, you know, are so focused on certain groups in boxing, right? Heavyweight boxing in the United Kingdom, right? Where people like Bacoli, Joseph Parker have traveled from their countries to be in the United Kingdom, to be part of the heavyweight scene. We're focused on that scene. We're focused on about 10, 11 fighters. We don't realize that if a guy has the right style to actually neutralize the prevailing paradigm. That guy could do damage. Right, folks, I'm not sure how Martin Bacoli would keep Rosansky off of him. I believe Rosansky is one of the few guys who'd be able to get inside on Gili Zhang. Right, you saw Joseph Parker moving away from Zhang and Wilder. Right now, just imagine, and Parker hits hard. Right, just imagine if there was an illusion. Parker comes across as athletic. Parker's in, you know, Parker's younger than Rosansky. Just imagine if there's the illusion that the big guy is fighting 
someone who's older, someone who hasn't fought the quality of opposition that Joseph Parker, who, let's face it, has fought Dillian White, has fought Anthony Joshua, right, has fought Joe Joyce, has fought. We know Parker has fought world-class fighters. Just imagine if we're looking at the resume, if fellow gamblers are looking at the resumes of a guy like Rosansky, and they're saying, wow, you know, this guy hasn't fought the big names. This guy is a local Polish fighter. Right? Don't you think you're going to get much better odds on Rosansky than you would betting on a Joseph Parker? Folks, I'm just telling you, this guy is dangerous. Jermaine Franklin went the distance with Anthony Joshua. Right? I don't see how Jermaine Franklin would go the distance against this guy. So we're at a fork in the road. This happens a lot in boxing, where you look on film and you think, you know what, how good is this guy really? He's about to fight a former Olympian, he's about to fight a former cruiserweight champion, a fighter who was unbeaten until his last fight. Right? There's a possibility, and it's a distinct possibility, that Lawrence Acoli comes in and destroys him. Shows you what being a world-class amateur does for a fighter, right? Let me just say, though, for me, it almost doesn't matter who wins the fight. It's how the fight is fought. If this guy gets past a Coley's jab, if this guy is able to land the type of big shots that he landed against Alan Babbage, and folks, that fight's not close. Right? Babbage has his moment, just like Spielka has his moment, and then the fight clicks the other way. Right? I need for folks to understand that this guy might be the Bridgerweight champion. The 6'1 Bridgerweight champion who's 38 years old might actually turn out to be a major threat to the heavyweight throne. Right? Just ponder that possibility. You know, there's a chance that a Coley against Rosansky turns into Fabio Wardley against Fraser Clark. Right? A great fight where you say, okay, both guys distinguish themselves. Even though one guy won, the other guy showed me enough where I realized the other guy is competitive. Right, folks, again, for me, it doesn't matter who wins. Apart from the fact that I do have money on one of them. Well, it doesn't matter who wins. Long term, the big prize is the heavyweight title. Just to understand, heavyweight is a division where someone lighter than the Bridgerweight division right now is about to fight Tyson Fury for the undisputed title. Right? Just understand we're in an era right now where many of the prevailing heavyweights are big and clunky. Right? A Mike Tyson guy who can fight low like Canelo, get inside, and then who has hand speed and accuracy, Rosansky at his best is throwing hooks with both punches, and who is clever about it. There's a moment... Look at the film in the Babbage fight where Rosinski looks like, excuse me, Rosansky looks like he's going to throw a right hand and then suddenly throws instead the left hook. You can tell that's thought out. You can tell the hand speed has Babbage completely confused. You can tell Babbage realizes that he can't even take a step forward and grab this man. Right? The heavyweight division right now is missing a Tyson, a Joe Fraser. Perhaps that fighter exists already, weighs more than 220 pounds, 
has faster hand speed than many of these bigger heavyweights, has better legs than you think, and can force a shootout from in the pocket, which is a different strategy than Usyk, who has really a full ring strategy, right? Usyk's not trying to be front foot heavy. This guy's heavy front foot. Usyk's not trying to be heavy front foot. Usyk's trying to move around, move laterally, pick his spots, then come in the pocket. Rosansky's like Tyson. Let's find out how well prepared the rest of the heavyweight division is. Right? And right now, as I've said, he does not have a Joe Parker resume. He has the kind of resume where against these bigger names. Not just publicity-wise, but size-wise. Right? When you see him, he looks like an older fighter. You don't realize he's still in his 30s. The persona is a man of the crowd persona. Right? He wins. He turns to his corner. Everyone comes over to him. He's hugging everyone. And, you know, he, he does not come across like a star boxer. He might be. Right? Take a hard look. And I mean a hard look at this Okoli Rosansky fight. Right? Rosansky might be what I call a ringer. Right? You know that book, The Art of War, by Sun Tzu. Right? If you believe what's in that book, you believe that you win most battles before you fight them. Right? This guy's style is going to give all of these guys problems. Let me point out, too, that if, in fact, the paradigm changes in the heavyweight division, then you're going to have different fighters suddenly reemerge, right? Andy Ruiz, who still has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division, in my eyes at least, Andy Ruiz would be an interesting matchup against this guy, right? Understand, right now, fighters like Ruiz are a bit on the outside, aren't they? Right? Let's just say if Daniel Dubois had a problem with Kevin Lorena, I would expect a fight between Dubois and Rosansky to be blood and guts. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I'm just telling people, hey, look at this guy. There's a possibility here. We'll find out more when he fights the former cruiserweight champion, Lawrence Okoli. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. To see his past fights, just go to my favorites folder. Let me point out, too, just like Tyson in the 80s, you notice when this guy knocks people down, they're badly hurt on the canvas. Think Trevor Burbeck in the 1980s. Right? They're badly hurt on the canvas. This guy hits that hard. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.